This question starts off as a relatively straightforward one where we are simply identifying the relative atomic mass based on the abundance of the different isotopes. And we've got the four isotopes there, 46, 47, 48 and 49. So as mass spec calculations go, this is about as simple and as straightforward as you could expect. If we take a look at the working out, you're gonna get a mark for that. And it is simply working through as you can see on here. Um, the abundance is a percentage on this. So we know we're going to be dividing by 100. Do bear in mind that on some questions, you're not given a percentage abundance and you've got to work out what you're going to divide by. But I'm sure you'll see that on other examples that I go through. Now, once I put those in, I get my final answer of 47.8. I've answered to one decimal place, which is what the question requested, and actually a mass spectrum calculation, a mass number calculation, will always be to one decimal place. But it is about reading the question carefully there as well. And it's also then about asking yourself the question, is it a reasonable answer? And we can see that our isotopes have a range of 46 to 49, the fact that my answer is within that range tells me that I am very much along the right lines and it is a reasonable answer. If I got below 46 or above 49, I would be going back and revisiting that calculation because I will absolutely know that I've made an error. Okay, moving on to 4.2 and 4.3. So, in terms of the electron impact um, ionization, you do have to be able to write the equations, but there is a very, very similar pattern across all of them. You can see here that we have got the Ti going to Ti plus, and we're losing an electron. So we know we're firing high energy electrons at it, and they are knocking electrons off the outside of the titanium atom, one electron per atom, in the vast majority of cases. I've actually still not got the mark here yet though, because I must include the state symbols. This has occurred after our sample has been vaporized when it goes into the mass spectrum. The MZ value that we're looking for that is going to reach the detector first is the one that's fastest. And the one that's fastest will always be the smaller isotope. And the reason for that is during the acceleration, they are all accelerated to the same kinetic energy. So smaller particles will move faster with that same kinetic energy as larger ones. We then move on to a calculation um, and we can see here, um, I know what my mass of one moles of titanium 49 would be. It would be 49 grams. But I also know that it contains Avogadro's number of atoms. Read the question carefully as well, because we want to calculate the mass in kilograms of one atom. So I'm first going to convert my 49 grams into kilograms, and I've done that just here. And once I've done that, I can divide that by Avogadro's number, as you can see. And that's going to take me to my answer. Um, now, the official mark scheme rounded this to 8.1. Um, if you take a look at the data, see if you can work out why that was the case. Uh, so it came out as 8.137 by 10 to the minus 26, and I've rounded it to 8.1 by 10 to the minus 26. We then move on to by far the most complicated part of this question. And um, it is only worth three marks. There is a huge amount of work that you need to do to get the credit for those marks. So let's take a look at it step by step. First of all, you've been given this equation. You might not be incredibly familiar with it. You won't find many examples of this within exam questions, but you are hopefully, from all of the experience you've had elsewhere in chemistry, you are able to rearrange equations. So the first thing that we are going to do is make D the subject, because ultimately we need to know the length of that flight tube, and we've got enough data that we can find that out. 
I'm actually going to need to use the answer from 4.3. So when I worked out my mass of one atom of deuterium 49, I got it as 8.137 by 10 to the minus 26. I'm going to bring that forward into this expression because we're going to work out the distance using the deuterium 49 data. Now, what I have done here is highlighted the numbers so we can see where they come from. So the time of flight, we were told within the question, that's where I've highlighted in turquoise. And then we're dividing by the root of M, which is what we worked out for titanium 49. And then we're dividing that by two times the kinetic energy of an iron. And again, that was provided within the question and that's therefore highlighted in green. Once I do that, I can work out my length of the flight tube and I can see that it's 1.549 meters. At this point, I've almost got to go back to the beginning because I now need to use the information that we have there to actually consider the time of flight for the titanium 47. So I know that I can work out the mass. We actually did that. That was the whole of 4.3, doing it for titanium 49. So I'm going to take my mass, which I've converted to kilograms, divide by Avogadro's number, and I end up with 7.80 by 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. That's the mass of one atom of titanium 47. So I can put that into the expression, the actual expression that we were given at the start of this, this question. It doesn't need to be rearranged. I've put that in. My kinetic energy is exactly the same as it was previously. So I include that within there. And I can now add D because the distance that these travel, the length of the flight tube is going to be the same. They're happening in the same mass spectrometer. So I've now got all of the components that I need to work out the time of flight. And we can see here that that comes out as 9.61 by 10 to the minus 7 seconds. Again, I'm going to look at this and ask myself, is that a reasonable answer? The time of flight for a titanium 49 plus iron was 9.816 by 10 to the minus 7. That's not dissimilar. And you would be expecting your answer for this very similar isotope with a very similar mass to be in the same region. So I would confidently move on at that point, knowing that I've potentially done everything right. If it came out to 10 to the minus 14 or 10 to the power of 4 or 10 to the power of minus 3, I'm going to start questioning where I've gone wrong.